Lesson in three, two. All right, pre calculus lesson three two. Today's date is January 5th, 2021. Our objective today is to do what with the quiet raised hand? Beverly. Find the composition of two functions. There it is. So before what we had was there was a number in here, like h of f of one or h of f of two. But now I'm just saying h of f of x, which means find the general function as if you were trying to find the shortcut. Um, and hopefully I made these problems so they came out nice. If they come out gross, it happens. So not all functions are, are nice. Um, so first, um, reminder that first I'm going to plug x into f, but there's nothing to plug into. f of x is just 2x minus 3, so there's nothing to do for your first step. The, the only step that we're really doing today is plug f into h, plug f into g, plug b into a. You always go from the outer to the, or from the inner to the outer, or from the right to the left. Move to the left. So that's what we're going to do in this case. We're going to plug f into h. That means everywhere in h that we see a variable, we only see one of them, lucky us, we're going to plug in 2x minus 3 into that 1x. And then we're done after we simplify a little bit. So who can help me do that? Who can read our new function? Read just the right h. That one? G um, yeah, you basically rewrite H, and then in the place of X, you're going to say 2X minus 3. So go ahead and say it for us, Leo. So it would be like, so it would be 2X minus 3? Or would it? Well, read H of X first, and then once you get to the place of X, then instead of saying X, say 2X minus 3. 3, 3X plus 1. Keep going. And then for this one, I'm lost right here. So the, there'll be plus. Well, then you have, to, you have the plus one as well, right? Okay, yeah. so plus one. Plus one, yeah. And then you've, you've done the substitution. This is the answer. You just need to simplify it now. And everyone just make sure that you can see what Leo did. This 3x plus one, maybe it can make a, a different color to make it pop out. This 3x plus Wait. one was the thing that Leo substituted into h. I thought the f of x went into the oh. place. Isn't that 2x minus 3? X minus three, sorry. Yes. I'm I think I led Leo astray. It should be this f of x right here, two x minus three. This two x minus three goes into this x. So sorry about that. Let me change that. Two x minus three, like that. Thank you for correcting us. All right, and Leo, can you simplify that denominator for us? Which one? Can you multiply the three into both of these two terms and then also add the one? So you want to multiply three times two and then three times eight and three? Yep. So first it's three times two is six. Six x? So six x, yep. And then would it just be That'd be a negative, right? It's a negative. Yep. Two, not quite. So three times negative three is a negative three. Wait, I'm lost. Three times three. So, oh, wait, isn't that like negative nine? Negative nine, yeah. Negative nine. And then don't forget our or plus one as well. And then you have to simplify it. What is negative nine plus one? Eight of 10. Not quite, they're going opposite directions. So if I'm minus nine, I'm, I'm down nine. I'm gonna go back up one. Would it be eight? Yeah, exactly, eight. Cool, and then we can actually simplify this even further, but I have picked on Leo too much. I need to pick on someone else. Um, I can factor out a GCF out of the denominator and then that'll simplify with the numerator. Let me change to a new color here and then black, sure. What is the greatest common factor of the denominator that we can factor out? 
Beverly? Two. Yep, so if I factor out a two, I'm left with a what, Beverly? Three X minus four. Perfect, and that number is still four. And Beverly, how would you reduce four divided by two? Two. Yep, so two in the numerator, and you still have this three X minus four. And we have our final answer. So the concept, I feel the new concept isn't that hard. You just plug whatever f of x is into the variable. And then the simplifying, I think, is kind of the hard part because that's the, the review. How do you factor things out of a binomial? How do you reduce fractions, stuff like that? But it's good review. All right, um, let's do example number two. So again, I'm, I'm not going to say <laughs> the instructions, but are you plugging f into g? Does f go into g or does g go into F. Someone help me and then actually do it. Yeah, Ellery? F would be plugged into G. Yep, so F goes into G. So you like would that, have... Which means... Wait, should I read out what the... Go for it. Yes, please, yeah. So then you would have um, three square root of two X minus seven squared. Exactly. And I'll pick on you a little bit more. Can you reduce that for us? Um, so this, because it's squared, that basically cancels out the square root. So you would so have, have three. Three. I never know when the square root goes away. Is that three times two X minus seven now? Okay, so then you have three yeah, times. Yeah, because this was always saying three times the square root. So now you're saying three times okay. whatever's left over. So three and then two X minus seven because the two and the square root canceled. And then that simplifies more to 6x minus 21. There it is. And final answer, box it. The homework is about this level of difficulty too. They're, they throw hard ones in like example number three here and there, but it's pretty straightforward. Just plug them in. All right, example number three. Here we go. Ooh, a cube root, ooh, scary. So I have a cube root and I have something cubed over here. All right, it's up to someone else to tell me what am I plugging into what? Does B go into A, does A go into B? And then actually read it out for me. I know that most people are still copying down this problem. Chewy, you want to help us out? Does B go into A or does A go into B? Into A. Yep, so B does go into A. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite A and then Chewy, you're going to help me with this. So I still have that cube root of something. What goes on the inside of the cube root? Um, so be x minus three, whatever that is. Yep, so it is x minus three. That's the original default A. But remember, in the place of A, you said plug B into A. So this 27x cubed plus three goes. Plus, okay. Yeah, so read out what's inside here now. Okay, so 27x3 plus 3 minus 3, right? Plus 3 and then minus 3, exactly. All right, sure, I'll make you do one more step. Just get rid of those threes. How do you combine these threes? What happens? Do you multiply them? No, you're just adding, you can drop the parentheses since there's no multiplication happening here. Oh, okay, so would it be 6? No. You have a positive three and then you subtract three. Well, my bad, zero. Yep, so plus zero or just nothing. So really what we have is the cube root of 27 x to the power of three. Thank you, Chewie. And how do I do the next step here? This is a little bit tricky. Properties of exponents review. How do we simplify this?
And I'll give you guys a hint. So if you have something like the, the square root of, I don't know, 25 x to the power of four, let's do x to the power of six. This is equal to the square root of 25 times the square root of x to the power of six, which is equal to five times x to the power of three. So that's your side example. You can break it apart into two, di two different pieces, but you also have to remember <laughs> what are your cube roots that you've memorized from previous units. So how do I do that over here? Quiet raise hand, who's got this? No one? Caroline, you wanna give it a shot? Just break it apart like this. Instead of one cube root, you're gonna have two cube roots. How are you gonna say to them? Would it be, I mean, I'm not sure. So look at what's happening in this example. I take the number and put it under one of the square roots, and then I take the variable and put it under the other. That's exactly what you're going to do over here. You take the number, so 27, 27, and yep. x cubed. Exactly, yep. And I'll pick on you just a little bit more. Do you know what the key root of x cubed is? And I can give you another hint over here. The fourth root of x to the power of four is x. The square root of x squared is x. The fifth root of x to the power of five is x. So just x. Exactly, yep. So this is just x. Perfect. And then I'll call in another quiet raised hand. What is the cube root of 27? This is something that you should have just memorized. Yeah, Ellery? Is it three? It is indeed three, which means our final answer, Ellery, is? Three X. Three X, there it is. All right, that's all I have for you guys.